This little circuit board right here is probably the world's cheapest reverb effects unit. Check this out. So how much does it cost? $2.33 on AliExpress. So let's take a closer look at this. We'll get it all wired up and then I'm going to run my guitar through it and we'll see if it sounds any good. Okay, so let's get a close-up look at this circuit board here. So this is the PT2399 integrated circuit. This is the brain of the board. Here we've got two DuPont header pins for our audio in, two pins for audio out, and then we can just screw our wires in here for our DC current. I think it's six volt to nine volt. Okay, and then here's the uh, R27 resistor. So you can remove the resistor there, and you can see that I have removed it. And instead, if you wire in a potentiometer, see the pads marked SGG, you can wire a potentiometer onto that for th further control of the board. So the existing potentiometer on the board controls your mix, the amount of reverb and delay mixed with your original audio signal. And then when you add the second potentiometer, you can control the amount of delay. So while I will be running my guitar through this, I didn't happen to have any uh, quarter inch audio jacks handy. Of course, quarter inch is the size of your typical guitar patch cord. Uh, so instead I've had to wire this up with some old 3.5 millimeter jacks. Okay. Um, so you see that the connector here is the uh, a two pin DuPont, a uh, two pin female DuPont connector. And of course those are common with any computer switches. So all I've done is wired some old uh, 3.5 millimeter jacks onto these header connectors. Here I'm using a 50K potentiometer to control uh, the delay signal. This is the jack from an old uh, wireless phone base station, which I think it takes uh, seven volts or something. You could wire it up for a nine volt battery if you want it. And of course, adding the, the power jack is just a matter of screwing those wires in place. Okay, I've got everything wired up just over here. Let's have a look. Now for the moment of truth. Okay, I've got the delay circuit board wired up. I've got my guitar plugged into it and I've got it running into the computer. Here's the guitar tone we'll be starting with. So this is just the Strat running into a Joyo American, which uh, is considered a Fender amp simulator. I, I love it, I think it's great. Remember I said we have two potentiometers, one to control the amount of delay added to the original audio signal, and then the potentiometer that I added on controls the amount of time between each delay. So we'll start at the maximum amount of time between each delay and the maximum amount of mix. 
which sounds like this. So right from the start, you can hear there's a lot of fuzz in there, a lot of distortion coming through. Yeah, you can really hear the distortion on that. Not distortion, you can really hear the fuzz on that. Or the white noise being added in. Okay, let's figure out how much time that is. Let me see if I can get this up on the screen. Got 65, 0.65, 0.66, 0.61, 0.63, 0.64. So when I would say 0.63, so the maximum amount of time between each delay is about 0.63 seconds. Yeah, that's really dirty. So let's let's turn down the mix. Still hear it. Okay, now what happens is, as we decrease the amount of time, that fuzz starts to disappear. You can hear there's less of it there. Increase it a bit. Yeah, you can really hear it there, the fuzz. Bring it back down. So I'd say that that's, uh, that's manageable. Let's, uh, let's shift to more of a reverb sound, so we'll decrease the amount of time. So let me close it right off. I'm going to increase the mix. So that's not bad for a slapback reverb. it a bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of gain into my uh, my direct signal. fuzz there. So from what I've heard so far, I'd say, you know, it's acceptable for, for a light slapback reverb. 
slash echo, because really it's more of an echo. Uh, but once it moves into the delay, there's really just too much fuzz to, uh, to control. I mean, maybe you could bury it in the tracks and, and not hear it so much, but I think it's noticeable. It's certainly noticeable there. So sure, why not? $2.33 for a, a, for a little bit of light slap back and echo. Now there's something else that it does that's kind of neat. As you start to change the amount of time between each delay cycle, it changes pitch. So check this out. Again, $2.33, you can't go wrong. It just takes a little bit of time to put it together and then you can play with it. One more note about the fuzz that gets added into each of the delay cycles. I believe that the, the amount of fuzz decreases as you increase your DC power to the board. So I'm running 5.5 volts into it, and I did a test before, I don't have the setup right now, but I did a test I believe with 9 volts, and there was less, less fuzz put into it. So it's possible that I'm underpowering it, and for some reason that causes the fuzz. <laughs> Okay, that's it for this video, though it's not the last you'll see of this thing. I have other plans for it. Actually, I have other plans for the little uh, integrated circuit that I showed you at the beginning of this video, but we'll get to that later. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time around. <laughs>